Hey guys, welcome back to part four of our player designer series. Uh, this will likely be optional for some of you player designers as um, jumping is perhaps a basic part of your character design, but a double jump may not be. And so feel free to skip this tutorial uh, if this does not apply to you. Uh, but anyways, we're going to talk about how we can get our character to jump twice. So let's get into that right now. Okay, um, let's maybe just go over a little bit of how we're going to get this code to work. And what we're going to do is we, we have a series of um, different uh, states, I guess, where uh, the character is either standing on the floor, the character is either jumping for the first time, uh, the player has released from their jump button after their first jump. Okay, so they push down on the button, they release from the jump button, and then they press the jump button a second time. Okay, and you'll see on the side here, it says jump times equals to zero, jump times equals to one, two, and three, and so on. And what this is, is this is a progression for uh, our game variable or game attribute, which we're going to need to create here. And it's going to slowly move up from zero to one, to two, to three. And then after it reaches three, it limits uh, our ability to do our program code. So let's maybe look at a little bit of uh, the details of that right now, uh, now that we have a bit of an overview. Okay, uh, first thing I'm gonna do, let's create this game attribute uh, called, uh, what is it called? I called it jump times. And so it keeps track of how many times the character has jumped and, and what's going on within our game. Now, sometimes when you create your game attribute, it doesn't, uh, it may not show up here as it does. So I can see jump times here. I can get the value of jump times, but I can't set it. So uh, you will need to close this code. Uh, so close your character, uh, my Ultra Mega Man character. I'm just going to reopen it again. And go back over to events and um, we're going to have to do something here in his touching floor. So if I go to setters now, uh, I should be able to set jump times. Okay. And um, if we look at the notes that I had created earlier here, right, if he's standing on the floor, which is what this code is here right now, jump time should be zero. And I'm going to put the value of zero there. Okay, so each time he touches the floor, he has been jumped. Okay, so that's, that's something we want to make sure we do. It resets the whole program. So after the character lands, jump time is zero, and then that allows, uh, that will allow our character to jump again. Okay, if we push up, Okay, now here's an interesting thing. So if we push up, we want to make sure that if it was zero, so uh, let's do a comparison. Okay, if the previous value of jump time, so I'm in getters right now, if the previous value of jump times was zero, we're going to set it to one. Okay, and I'm actually going to jump ahead a little bit. And I'm also going to do one more thing. Uh, I'm also going to do the same thing if I'm going to do another equals. And I'm going to put the value uh, two here. And we're also going to get the value of jump times as well. So if jump times is two, we're going to set touching floor to false. Okay, so we got two ifs this time. If it's zero, it becomes one. If it's two, he can no longer jump. So set touching floor equals to false now. Okay, uh, so you might think, oh, it's going from zero to one. How does it get from one to two? You know, what, what's, what's going on? Why don't we go straight from, why is this not a one or why is this not a two? Um, the key part here is, um, it's something that we very rarely think about is when we let go of a button, and then we want to push back down on the button a second time. So what we actually need to track is when we release from the jump button, then it increases to a new state, in which case then the player can press on the button a second time. So we need to actually track that, and that's where we're going to change it from one to two. And so I'm going to click on add event. I'm going to use input this time. And let's see here, when, um, so we want keyboard, any key, keyboard, yep. Okay, so when the control, when the up button is released, 
Okay, and we want to make sure that uh, it was the previous state. So if the but up button was released, and let's check here if it was one, it becomes two. So if our game attribute jump times uh, flow equivalent, so if jump times was one, we're going to set it to two. Set jump times. Okay, so I'm just going to put this into here. Set jump times to two. Okay, so now we've set up all the code for this entire flow that I've described at the beginning, right? So the first part was down here is touching floor. Set jump times to zero. Uh, jump, these two parts, setting it, going, setting it to one, setting it to three. Okay, and then when we release. So I'm gonna just rename this to release. Okay, let's try this out. Uh, it's really important to uh, make sure you guys are testing your code out to make sure what you've created actually works uh, because until we've tested it and tried it out ourselves, uh, we don't really know if the code is actually working or not. Okay, uh, I have tried this out before and let's just try this out. Oh, he's just flying up in the air. Okay, so he is flying up, um, but if we let go and we jump a second time, he can jump, okay? So it's nearly working, but he can continuously fly up. So let's prevent that from happening. And so uh, what we'll need to do is, um, let's see here. It's, it's, uh, let's look at what maybe why that's happening uh, to understand how we can fix it. So as we hold on to that button, the speed increases if it zero becomes one. So what we'll also need to do is, um, as soon as we push this, we also want to make sure that, hey, um, if it's if it becomes one, we don't want to repeat this operation here. And so uh, what we can actually do is I can actually just limit this by using two copies of this. So I can set this. And so when it becomes one, this won't be zero and the speed won't increase anymore. And I'm just going to repeat this code one more time here and so this will this is actually the part that where the character where it causes the character to jump and so because it's inside these two ifs as soon as the if uh as soon as it performs this action this causes the condition itself to become false or in this case this causes the greater condition at the very top to become false so let's try this out um it might take your head a little bit to think about what's going on and why this is working um if you understand it, great. If you don't, uh, at least you know how to follow these instructions to get it working. Um, and uh, do feel free to uh, make a post and uh, I'll try to maybe explain it a second time better. Okay, so that looks looks pretty good. Okay, if I'm holding the up button, the character doesn't jump continuously. Okay, but if I hit that button, let go, and then jump again, he does perform the double jump as uh, we looked at. Okay, if you want your character to jump higher, then um, you can decrease the gravity or you can just increase the jumping speed. So if I want to make his second jump uh, really, really high, um, I can just increase that value. Okay, so feel free to play around with that yourself and uh, get things working uh, as you like. All right, we will see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching.